Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're taking a look at how to zoom in Premiere Pro. And hey, if you're not familiar with us, we're all about helping you, the video creator, with templates, footage, tutorials, plugins, audio, and more. In fact, we have tons of free Premiere Pro templates ready to download. I've put a link in the description down below, so make sure to hop over and grab some free stuff. So in today's video, we're going to be showing you how to zoom into your footage in Premiere Pro. Spoiler alert, it's incredibly simple to pull off because you're really only dealing with one parameter slider to actually achieve this effect. So at the end of the video, we're going to be showing you a way that you can take this to the next level, and even a way that you can create your own custom transition with this effect. But quickly, let's clear up some terminology. Zooming in Premiere Pro might actually not be the best way to talk about this. It's actually a lot more like scaling, because what you're doing is increasing the scaling of your footage size. And the edges of your frame still remain the same, so it looks like your footage is more zoomed in. But with that out of the way, let's dive into the basics and learn how to zoom in Premiere Pro. So here we are in Premiere Pro, and I'm going to start off by making sure that we have a piece of footage on our timeline. And to actually zoom into our footage, it all comes down to the scale parameter here, in Effect Controls, under Motion. By dragging it to the right, or keying in a number above 100, you can see that your footage size increases, and the frame around your footage remains constant. So it looks like your footage is zooming in. This can help you focus in on a specific area of your footage by making it take up more of the frame. You can also then manipulate the position sliders to go left, right, up, or down to really focus in on the area of your choosing. But you might notice that when you play your clip back, your footage just remains like this. But what if you want your clip to start normal and then end up at the zoomed in place? You'll have to do what's called keyframing. To start, let's just quickly reset everything by hitting these reset buttons here beside our position and scale parameters. Then let's move our playhead back to the beginning of our footage. To enable keyframing for your scale and positioning, click on these stopwatches beside your scale and position parameters and they should turn blue. This means that keyframing is now on. And a default keyframe has already been set wherever your playhead is located at this moment. Now whenever you move to a new position on your clip, and make changes to your scale or position, these changes will be locked in at the position your playhead is over. And because you also have keyframes at the beginning, the difference between these keyframes is realized over time, making your footage zoom in over the course of the time between these two keyframes. To make this change happen faster, you just need to set these keyframes to be closer together. And then by moving them farther apart, the zoom will happen slower. But you can see right now that the movement is pretty linear. It just starts, has a completely constant motion, and then abruptly ends. But you can actually give it a bit of a non-linear motion by right-clicking one of your keyframes and selecting a particular parameter. You can choose a Bezier, or an Ease In, or Ease Out. If you ease out your first keyframe, and ease in your second keyframe, what you're actually doing is creating a bit of an acceleration into your motion rather than just abruptly starting and abruptly stopping. For even more functionality, you can drop down this toggle here and you can actually work with your keyframes in a little bit of a graphical format. Grabbing these handles here and manipulating your graph a little bit will help to give you ultimate control over the look of your zoom. And guys, that's really the basics of how to zoom in Premiere Pro, but we didn't want to end things there. We wanted to give you a few more options for taking this to the next level to get the absolute most out of it for your next video. One of the ways that you can boost the scaling option is by going down to effects and adding an effect called transform. Then go through the same process of scaling up your footage over time using keyframes like we just did. Only this time, don't use the scale underneath motion, but instead underneath the transform effect. Once we've done everything, it should look exactly the same, but now if we uncheck Use Composition Shutter Angle, and then key in a manual shutter angle of 180, your effect will now have a realistic motion blur as if the camera was actually zooming in real space towards your subject. It can help to give it a little bit of extra polish. And now that you know how to give your zoom a bit of a flare, we're going to quickly show you how to turn it into a transition. I'll just place down a second clip here. Go to your Project Manager, and right click, and select a new adjustment layer. Next, place this two layers above your clip over top of the cut between your two clips, and then have it present for about as long as you'd want a transition between two clips to last. Then add the transform effect again to the adjustment layer, and then keyframe the scaling of the transform effect in your adjustment layer so that it starts at 100, 
and then ends at 300. Making sure that when it reaches 300, your second keyframe is above your second clip. Uncheck Composition Shutter Angle and Key in 180. And right now it should look like this, but don't worry, we're going to fix that. Hide your adjustment layer right now so that it's a little bit easier to work with your footage. And add another adjustment layer above your second clip only, but below the first adjustment layer that we just did. Go to your effects and search for Replicate. And then place it onto the shorter adjustment layer underneath. Set the replication to 3. And now you should have a grid of 9 pieces of footage, just for your second piece of footage. But we're actually going to add one more effect. It's called Mirror. Add it 4 times to your shorter adjustment layer. And this is really the toughest part of the entire transition, because we're going to need to move these mirror positions around to basically reflect in all four of these different places. The end result that we're going for is to basically make it look like we have one big reflection going out in all directions from the main piece of footage in the center. But if you needed to just copy my parameters here, you can pause the video and do that right now. So when we go back and unhide our top adjustment layer, we can see that our transition looks something like this. And guys, that's just been a quick look at how you can get the most out of zooming in Premiere Pro. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, as always, you can check out all of our tutorials here at motionarray.com. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.